Help us welcome the irreverent reverend, your freaky deacon, the one, the only, Mr. Art Zealous. Sometimes. My trademark enthusiasm is accompanied by active property damage, sometimes all the time. Good morning! Good morning, you venerable saints of art and craft. We make art best when we make art daily, so let's make art religiously. What's your art today? Today we are going to make restaurant-style activity placemats. So if you want to play along, Grab your doodling tools, and let's see how quick we can get from concept to concrete. And I know every one of you got something great inside, but if you are bedeviled by blockages, fear no longer, because you're going to pick up that phone and you're going to dial the number down below. And we are going to make something great today. But first, I want to say thank you to the Art Zealous Youth Singers. It's kids like you who inspire today's art. With your behavior at all sit-down restaurants. That's right, you inspire us. And I want to say thank you. We love art! Oh, you kids! Oh, oh, I needle you, but you're still good to me. I want to say thank you to good old Agnes on the organ, keeping us on time. And Agnes don't need a placemat, because she can't stay in one place. Hey, you want to say put, Agnes? No, she don't. And folks, there is someone special I want you to meet. Someone who's as classy as she is sassy. Hey, Belle, come meet the nice folks. Hoot and holler, please, for my lovely wife, Belle. Hi, happy Sunday, everybody. Now, darling, if you could only have one kind of pet, a parakeet or a rhinoceros, which would you choose? Oh, those are both such wonderful options. It would be really difficult, but I think if I could only have one pet, I would want to have it with me all the time, and a parakeet's just a tiny bit more portable than a rhinoceros, so I'm gonna have to go with parakeet. Indeed, it is a sage, sage choice. Folks, Belle here is gonna take your call, she's gonna keep you laughing in the chat, and she's gonna be the rock of the every single day of my life. How about one more round of applause for this lovely woman here? Come say hi to me in the chat, everybody. All right. Now, there are many many benefits to the restaurant style activity placemat. One is that it normalizes making art unselfconsciously in the public sphere while socializing with your friends and family. We need a little bit more of that, don't we? Two, it diverts our attentions gainfully while waiting for food in that restless time when we might otherwise be tempted to grouse loudly. Where is the food? When is the food coming? Does this place serve food? And three, of course, oftentimes, these placemats come with tiny little boxes of portable crayons that you get to keep. Ain't that something? And I know that you can tell them to me, for every school child knows them. What's art commandment number one? How do we always have what we need? That's right, we are resourceful. Your talents are the most effective with the right tools in your hands. So the first step is always to grab what you need to make it how you want it. Now today, I will be using my trusty doodle computer, but a pencil and paper is all you need, and a nice cold glass of water, because the most important tool is you. Art Next up, we are devoted. We explicitly state what it is we're going to make to keep our progress on track. Today I'm making a restaurant style activity placemat with themed activities that are simple and colorful. As long as I keep that in mind, I can't go wrong. Now, when I sit my butt down to work, I shall do no other thing until 
the art is finished. And as all the best art starts in the butt, for nothing can be accomplished if you do not sit down your buttocks, we first shake out the wiggles so that we will not be tempted to move from our seat once that seat has been applied. Are you ready? And let's shake it out. Let's shake out the wiggles. Shake the wiggles out of your body. Release them into the air and sit. Woo! Congratulations, friends. You are now a serious artist. Hey, kids, how do you plan to make something grand? Art dreamy. We are dreamy. That's right. We start these things by imagining the outcome of our wildest dreams, free of all limitations. And before we doodle, let's you and me jot down some tiny little love notes. Let's picture our project perfect and jot down all the dreamy things that we see. There we go. Get my doodler up here. All right. Say, hey there restaurant-style activity placemat. Don't you look nice today? I sure do like your accompanying box of crayons. That's right, they can't give you this thing without crayons. It's a legal liability issue for them. And as you can see, we got, we got just two minutes here to jot down a few things that we think of. Say, hey there, restaurant-style activity placemat. I sure do love your pencil mazes. Almost always got to have a pencil maze. And that is no, no sweat off my nose, as they always say. I say, I sure do love your open-ended drawing assignment. In this example here, you see we got, we got to draw two of your favorite foods on your plate. Now, this is starting from the assumption that pizza is already one of your favorite foods. Okay, all right, okay, Agnes. <clears throat> Agnes is telling us we only got one minute left, folks, so let's step it up. Let's see, jot down, uh, I sure do like your well-chosen theme. In this case, it's Christmas. It's a, a unifying theme to tie all of these activities together. I like your themed word scramble. That's interesting. All you gotta do is misspell a word, and that, and that makes it a game. Sure do like your themed connect the dots. We're, I gotta get a connect dot in there. That's a great, that's a great activity, it always is. Also builds up confidence for early drawing skills. Say, hey there, activity placemat. I sure do like your lots of different things to color in. Now you don't always get a ton of crayons. Sometimes you'll, you'll rarely get fewer than two crayons, but hopefully you get that tiny little box of crayons and then you can, you can color these things in. And that's, man, that is a time waster there. Hard to screw up, love it. Hey there, hey there, restaurant style activity placemat. I sure do love your, your free-form area to write or draw something in. Look at that. Okay. Okay. I sure am thankful for your uh, w w wedding-themed activity placemat. Like here. So this one has a decorate the cake, a guided drawing activity. That's great. Okay. Okay. And stop. Now that we've got our ideas notated, look at that. Look at that. Ain't that, ain't that something? I got a big thing right on my face, right on my schnoz. <laughs> That's right, we are lightly. <laughs> Friends, first we sketch fast and light so that we know later how to sketch fine and detailed. So we only know by doing, therefore let our first action be quick, nimble, and curious. And we shall set a five minute timer and meet the unfamiliar with a playful boldness. Set aside the eraser, friends, because nothing here is etched in stone. All right, let's take a look here and, oh, let's get that clock running here. All right, so we've got our notations. What are we going to put here? We're going to sketch it fast. We're going to sketch it lightly. We've got four minutes, 20 seconds remaining. The theme, I believe, for my restaurant-style activity placement will be fathers. And what I don't know what it is that makes me think of that. I've got a niggling, niggling concern in the back of my brain that maybe I forgot something. 
Maybe I'm, I'm thinking I'm excited about Christmas and I'm thinking about Papa Christmas. All right, I'm drawing a square on the screen. That's going to be the boundaries of my activity placemat. It does not have to be very exact. I'm going to, um, I'm very inspired by the, I'm very inspired by the, the decorate your cake suggestion. I like the idea of free form drawing within an activity constraint. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a, a sort of father figure here, like a big father right in the middle of this. And then we're going to, we're going to make it so that you get to, you get to draw on the different parts, sort of make your own father figure, which uh, this is a nice affordance in today's marketplace. You don't always get to choose your papa, and so whenever we can do so, that's worth doing. I'm going to let you draw all over the face. Free draw on the face so it can be the dad that you want. The only non-negotiable part of every father is the mustache. Every father has one. If your dad does not have a mustache, well, I'm sorry to be the first to tell you, that's probably your uncle. All right, so we got space for the mustache here. And uh, I think the mustache is going to be our maze. I'm going to let the, the, uh, the color, I'm going to make the tie. Ties are beautiful, and there's no color out of place in a, in a necktie. So we're going, to make that a, we're going to make that a free draw area. we got just two minutes and 30 seconds left. And you know that Agnes ain't going to let us forget it. Okay, so connect the dots with a, a, a pop's favorite activity, which uh, every father's favorite activity is mowing the lawn. He likes to mow the lawn. He likes to be seen mowing the lawn. Let's make sure... Dad has his opportunity to mow that lawn. We're going to make a little, little mower there and you can connect the dots on that. So we're going to put in the mower here first because that will dictate the placement of our dots next. But we're not worried about the dots right now. No, we do not as we art lightly. We just got to get something down to carve out the area, to get the, the merest suggestion of the art we're going to make. Every, every point of refinement will happen next. That's right. So move fast. And boy, I'm sweating here. You can see... You can see that I've got, I've got all these things to get down now, and I'm, I'm having a hard time making them fit, but I'm not worried. I'm not worried because time, time creates constraints, yes, but it also opens up pressure. And pressure plus constraints equal ecstasy. Yes, my friends, you will see the ecstatic response you get when you show your father this placemat, if yours is not an uncle. Okay, so we've got a minute, 30 seconds left here. I'm doing the word search area. That's going to be that's gonna be a sweetheart. You can, because, you know, it's not that difficult to add additional words to unscramble. So let's go ahead and treat that like it can expand to all the space around it if it need be. And um, let's see, looking at this here, what do we want to do? All right. Okay. Okay, all right, okay. One minute left. One minute left, Agnes. Woo! She's riding us, ain't she? Oh, she do not miss a trick, boy. Yeah. I, I, that woman has a, a pocket watch for her heart. All right, we got a minute left. Just a minute left here. Uh, let's... Okay, all right, okay. All right, let's take just a second here. Let's take just a second here before... Let's, let's take just a second here. And uh, I got overexcited. Let's take just a second here. 30 seconds remaining to sketch lightly, get every last bit of thing that you need here. So in, I got my word scramble, I got the area where my word search is going to go, I got my connect the dots, and I have a free draw area over the father's face. So you can give your, you know, probably not as good looking as you would like him to be father a makeover. And every father appreciates this because he knows, he knows that his his mustache is his curb appeal. So he's waiting for a, a makeover. If you could put makeup on him while he was asleep, that's the biggest favor you can give to a father. All right, and our time is up. Woo! 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 Ah, I'm winded. How about you? That was the shortest five minutes of my entire life. Congratulations, friends. Because now you got a tiny little baby Work of art! Yeah! Yeah, you do right there what you just made. And when you say, well, no, Zell, no, no, I'm not a good artist. This is only just some doodles I made. Well, let me say to you this. I say, in the imagination, there is ideas uncountable, but nothing up there is real until somebody makes it real. And you can give that doodle. You can give that doodle to the waiter coming to your table with the steaming blooming onion, and they're gonna take it and they're gonna say, Yeah, 
I think I get the picture. So you made you made a placemat here, and you a little activity area. That, oh, and that's an area where you can color down there. And when you go away from that table to wash your hands in the bathroom before you eat, your art will still be there. And that's what makes it real. So, go ahead and take a picture of your art if you would like to share it, because we would love to see it and text it to the number down below. Maybe you can have your dad, the human mustache over there, take a picture of it, send it in, we take a look at it. If we got time, we'll try to show it on the TV. Oh, but I just can't wait to see it either way. Whew! So thank you for taking a moment to appreciate your art. Now, the next part. Hey kids, how do we make this art as good as can be? Art progressive! We art progressive! That's right! Great art, all great art is an iterative process. Making stuff, stepping back to take a peek, and then making it some more. We ain't got to make it perfect if we can always make it better. So let's you and me's shoot the breeze, keep the companies, and make it how we please. We got 25 some minutes left to luxuriate on the rich and delicious details of our artwork. And I know, I know everyone is trying to get through, so uh, I better get to work answering some calls here. Folks, folks, the confessional, the confessional of the airwaves is now open. So please call that number. Call that number with any artistic worry, big or small, and we will strategize your salvation. If you've got crafting consternations, we have your artful solutions, and everyone is trying to call, so if you must leave a message, please do. Maybe if we're lucky, we can get you on the hey air. There, oh, 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 we got someone trying to get through. Oh, okay. Hold on. Is that number on the screen? That number does not appear to be on the screen. That number is now on the screen. Woo! Is it covered by something else? Sure it is. But, you know, a work of art is never done. You only run out of time. Let's take that call. All right, let's pass somebody through. Hey there, Art. This is Peppin' the Apparition out of Des Moines, San Diego, and I am your biggest fan. Now, Art, I got a question for you. You know, I, I like to make art. I enjoy making art, and I intend to do it daily. But, oh, and I got so many other fun things to do. How do you get your butt in the seat so you can make that art, Art? <laughs> well, thanks. I'll take my call off the air. Love you so much, Art. Thanks for all you do. Oh, oh, well, St. Pepper out of San Diego, Des Moines, thank you for calling. Thank you so much for calling. Oh, man, it was great to hear from you. Uh, I, you know, I'm as big a fan of yours as you are of mine. That is a lovely thing to hear. Thank you so much for that encouragement. That really keeps me going. So, your question is, you want to make art, as we all do, but you got a lot of other fun things to do. Like, how are you going to sit down and make art every single day when you got to throw a Frisbee for your dog? Or... Uh, go to the store to buy a new Frisbee because your dog took your Frisbee and ran off. Like, wh where do you find the time to make this art? I mean, everybody's got so many things to do in an individual day. How do you make the time to do the art? And that is a great question. That is a great question. I ask myself that every day. Now, now, frequent, frequent viewers of the program will know that my philosophy is that you can do no better than to wake up and have art be the first thing that you do in your day. So uh, that, that is what makes me uh, relaxed that I got my art done. I don't have to sit there worrying, oh, did I forget to make my art? Did I make my art today? So doing it first thing in the morning, that is one way that you can make sure that you make time for something that is important to you, but not always the urgent first priority. And another way that you can do it is you can Enlist some friends. Art is better when you make it together. So what if you had, what if you had some kind of art club where you got together with folks and made art? So then, whenever you might be tempted to kick your feet up and play some video games or to, to watch some TV or do anything else that isn't making your art, you've got a tantalizing option of getting on the, the phone with a friend or, or opening up the Discord and say, hey, time for our drawing club. You want to make our drawings now? And you make the drawings? and you, you, you have some fun with your friends, and you get your work done, and, and you know, you don't want to cancel that because you don't want to miss out on your friend. You don't want to disappoint your friend. So that's another great way you can make, you can make time for your art. And if, and if you got other ways to make sure to make time for your art, why don't you put them in the chat? I know Belle. 
I know Bell is constantly on the lookout for ways for her to, to optimize and perfect. She is assiduous and tireless in her efforts to do more things in the span of a day. And I, I, I would love to see what you come up with there. So go ahead, text those in the chat if you like. You can see I'm working on the, the nose part of the dad. Um, so the mustache, I'm going to use the grains of the mustache to become the, the, the walls of the labyrinth. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make the, the mustache maze a central part of this. Um, I drew the smile under the mustache here. So I'm going to erase the smile. We've got about 20 minutes remaining to see what we can get done. So, you know, we, we, we maybe are not going not gonna to have a ready-for-print project after this, but we are going to have something, something that is pretty concrete, and that's what we want to do with this. Remember, we make this art progressively, so we just got to get it as far as we can in the time allotted. That is our task. We want to have it be as developed as we can and know that we're going we're gonna to be making a new thing, a thing of a different order, and if that thing then deserves more time, we will firstly know that, and we will be able to set aside the time that it deserves if, if, if we're going to continue to develop this art. I know that's a, a pretty fuzzy construction here, but I know, I know there's nothing I can say that isn't heard by your grateful ears. All right, folks, if you want to call that number down below, that number is 775-ART-ZEAL. That's 278-9325. You please go ahead and do so. We'll talk to you live on the air, or if you got some art to show us, we would love to see it. We would love to see that. You just send that right along. All right, so I'm going to make a, the, the theme of this maze, help dad get a comb through his silly mustache. And so uh, we're going to have a comb on one side, and we're going to have, uh, we're going to have a tiny little comb that you use your pencil to draw a path through the maze. And so the, the maze must have a beginning and an end, so I'm going to use the, the right and the left ends of the mustache you can see here. There we go. There we go. It's looking pretty good. And the thing about the thing about mazes is you will be astonished at how quickly they come together. You look at them and they're a complicated pile of spaghetti, but they're they're actually a pretty effective way to to make a diverting activity. The the key to this I find is that you need to make the entrance and you need to make the exit very explicitly. And you, you, of course, we've already started by finding an interesting subject, right? It's, uh, it's no fun to do a maze that isn't in a weird or funny shape. So you find an interesting subject, say a father's mustache, and then you just draw a bunch of squiggly lines in there, real light, so that uh, if, you, if you squint your eyes, then you're like, oh, how could anyone ever get through this? And indeed, that will be the apprehension felt by your, by your audience. But the trick to this is that then you can go through with a little eraser and you can make just little notches. You can make notches in the spaghetti so that, so that though the pencil may have to travel a long and precarious path, there will always be a way through the maze. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so it's already reading as a mustache. It's is frankly a pretty unconventional maze, but I don't think... I think the biggest barrier to comprehension here is the typography. The help dad get a comb through his silly maze. That's going to be, of course, that's going to be the part that a lot of folks don't, uh, a lot of folks don't see. So uh, we're going to, uh, there's a better way to do this typography, but for now this is good. And we just start to make little eraser lines here. See what I'm doing here? Okay. All right. Okay. All right, look at that, look at that. Oh, you know, and, and you're probably saying to yourself, well, I could never draw a mustache this good. What if it isn't this good? What if they don't like it? Well, you know what we say to that. Don't you, kids? Don't you? Hey, kids, how do we happily handle the hate? Art kindly! That's right, we art kindly. What if I'm not as good as so-and-so? You see, you know... And I know you know that unkind thoughts directed at anyone, yourself included, is nothing but a waste of precious resources. You need to keep those resources for your resources. You must art resourceful. You need your energy. You need your optimism. You need your forward progress. You need your focused attention. And old Scratch, he loved to whisper hateful mischiefs into our ear to deter us in our progress. 
And to that we say coconuts. Coconuts to you, old scratch! This mustache is coming up pretty good. And you can see the little notches I'm putting in there. So it still reads as a mustache, but now it reads better as a maze. Yeah, you can see the, you can see the progress I'm making there. Yeah, look at that. All right, we got about 16 minutes and 58 seconds remaining. We do not want to spend all that time on the mustache, though we would be tempted. For a mustache is a thing, a thing of grandeur, which deserves our folks' attention. All right, folks, it's time for a segment we call the Sunday School Bell. The segment in which I throw out outlandish premises at my darling wife, and we watch inspired and envious as she creates something out of nothing. I'm gonna continue to draw while this happens. Are you ready, my darling? I'm as ready as I'll ever be, love. Okay, darling, you're gonna have 60 seconds to answer each of these open-ended prompts, and we can't wait to see what you have to say. All right. 60 seconds. Okay. 60 seconds, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, get ready. I'm ready. Get set. I'm set. Darling, if we don't know where baby pigeons come from, where should they come from? Oh, well, it's always better when you don't know and you get to say should. Uh, it's a very delightful way to feel empowered and to create the world that you want to live in in your imagination rather mm -hmm. than be limited by a world that's dished out to you. What we know about baby pigeons is they're extremely fluffy. They're so, so soft and downy soft, and they haven't yet grown into the beautiful creatures often referred to as uh, winged rats. And so I would like to believe that they come from uh, the gunned toy factory, which is the source <laughs> of the softest things that I know and that there is a big downy nest like a foam pit that you find in a gymnasium um, but it's only full of the softest 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 down and if you dig into the center of that you'll find a nice endlessly replenishing uh, sort of just plethora of beautiful baby pigeons waiting to be picked One up. One and time! She did a perfect time out on there! Now, darling, do they use like an ice cream scoop or a melon baller to get those tiny little perfect <laughs> spheres of down out of that? Well, yeah, but it has to be done very delicately so it's an ice cream scoop made out of pillows. Huh. I get that all makes sense. I guess that makes sense. Oh, wow, okay. You knocked it out of the park. You never miss one of these, but let's see. Let's see if I can't I can't throw one at you. Okay. So darling, prove that Bob Ross is our generation's Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, well, that's an easy one. I wish you would give me a challenge in these mornings so I could oh, show I off what I, I could. could really do. Uh, so Bob Ross is our generation's Leonardo da Vinci because Leonardo da Vinci was not just an amazingly influential and gifted artist and a venerable saint of arts and crafts. No question. He was an inventor. He was an engineer. He was somebody who saw beyond himself and he put the infrastructure in place to bring others along into the vision that he could see. And he did that with his scientific drawings and illustrations. And so Bob Ross, Bob Ross, who of course understood and spoke seconds. fluently the joy of painting, figured out a mechanism, a structure by which he could uh, engineer uh, an entire generation of venerable arts, uh, saints of arts and craft who also can appreciate and participate in the joy of painting just by following his steps. In many ways, he would remind me of you, dear. Oh, wow, and she got a sweet compliment in on the tone. She did it. She did it. It's no BS either, is it? She does it every time. I'm, I'm, reasonably, I'm reasonably convinced that Bob Ross is the Leonardo da Vinci of our generation. How does she do this in 60 seconds? You can't stump her. You can't stump her. We're going to have a viewer contest to try to stump her. I think that's what we do. I think that's what we do. I think we I mean, you got something you can, you can stump. You got an artistic question you think you can stump Belle Zealous with. You text it down to 775 Art Zealous. I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can do it. I would love to see you try. I okay. do love hearing from and talking to all of the venerable arts and saints in our audience. I do wish you'd come on in, chat with me in the chat, send us a text. I'd happily talk with you, stump it or not. Oh, oh, they love, and they love you. You are their absolute favorite. Every time I come on the screen, they're like, hey, where'd Belle go? Hey, where, where's the pretty lady? Who's this, who's this boob? I love you too. I do think their favorite is coconuts. Oh, coconut. <laughs> He's a real treat. I wish... I wish we had him on contract, because it would be great if we could get, get more screen time with coconuts. All right, darling, I got one more. I got right. one more for you. Let's okay. do it. All right. My darling, explain why modeling clay is superior to welding. Ooh, well, modeling clay is superior to welding mm -hmm. in specific specific circumstances and for specific purposes. Okay. There are times when welding is indeed the preferred activity and or method of forming a connection. Uh, but when right. you are interested in getting your hands directly on a form that you can, mm -hmm. with pressure and with your own intent and will and artistic vision, uh, derive a shape, a 3D entity that mm -hmm. represents your little baby vision of art. Ten seconds. It's 
faster, more efficient, lighter, and slightly more tactile rewarding to work with modeling clay than it is with welding. Oh, and she got the tactile angle. This is good because I'm a kinesthetic learner. That's great. It's great that she was able to fit that in there because it's a persuasive <laughs> argument, right? Yeah. To grope something is to know it. Okay. Darling, three for three. I'm going to give you an A+, plus, an A+, plus, and an A++ plus plus on those. Man! Do I, do I get a gold star, my you get You get all the gold stars I have in my possession. Those are my favorites. All right. Woo! Woo! That was, I'm winded. I'm exhausted after that. How does she do it, folks? How does she do it every single time? Okay. All right. Darling, thank you so much for that edification. I really appreciate it. Let's go back to see. Let's see how the art's coming along here. Okay. This is our word scramble here. Now, so the way that you, you do an, a word scramble is that you first come up with the answer, right? That's what you come up with first. So you can see here that my, my question is, or the objective of this is help, effectively, it's help a confused dad, of which there are many, unscramble his favorite words. Words like sports and ham and new mom. And, and let's see what this one is. Uh, let's see what this one is. Uh, kites. Kites. Things that dads love. And then once you have the answer, you merely take those words and you scramble their letters and give a little space to write them down. So if the answer to something that is dad's favorite is moms, then you might write down the word shmumashma. And, and then you put that off to the side, and you draw a little line, and then folks got to unscramble that. All right, we got about 10 minutes left, folks. 10 minutes only. This is not going as fast as I want. Why? Why is there always a rush to complete these things? Why? Why, I lament, can there not be infinite time to make art? And every moment is not the deadline, but the handing, the hanging, the opening night of the gallery show. And why is not every moment a deafening din of applause and very qualified congratulatory criticism. Why can it not be but that it, it is not? So we must make do with the reality. And that is not too bad a thing, I think, in my opinion. All right, so if the word is sports, let's scramble a letter to be porsts. Yeah, it takes care of it. And for new mom, Let's make the word mamao and mao. There we go. Okay. Mamao, mamao ni. And there, see, because that's two words, I'm going to indicate uh, two blanks there. And kites, well, that's an easy one. It's kataisis. Kataias. You know, remember, it's going to be, it's going to be folks solving these who are either dads or, or children to a dad, so you don't have to make them all very tough. It's nice if you can do a nice spread. Very frequently, the rubric folks use is they make the easy ones at the beginning and then they get up to the hard ones at the end. I think that's good. It helps to establish comfort. Like, uh, you know, you really don't got to stump somebody first. If you stump somebody right out the gate, they, they may not complete the task. Okay, so this is unscramble. And then um, we, we've got the word scramble. And then we've got a different activity, and these are very, very close to each other. So this is a word search in which we help dad find himself. So my premise on this is that, is that you will be looking for words like dad and pappy and pa padre uh, and fuego. Yeah, so... The way that you do this is you start with your longest word, you write it down uh, the one edge of it, and then continue to add additional words whenever you see a chance to do a little crossbar there with a short word, like I did with daddy and dad, you do that. Go ahead. I've got a papa there off of padre. And so I'm filling in the, the structural words in our word search here. Adam, that's a red herring. I mean, it could be said that in some cosmologies, Adam is a sort of father, but no, in this case, it's not one of the words that I'm looking for. And then once you have... <laughs> lawnmower. So once you have... Once you have your structural words, then you can start to fill in decoy letters. And that's, yeah, that's the word scrambler's art. 
It's decoy letters. You fill up an entire grid here, and seven minutes remaining, and you can fill up the entire grid here, and you're going to have all your bases covered. I got <clears throat> a dob. That's a, that's a fake. But then we got a two papas. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's dappa. Well, that's, then that's also red herring. And then we got a moj, a raw, ru, rua, da, da, drad, ro, duad. And uh, the common word, wait, z, z, rad, which is, um, was my grandmother's name. That's the word ium. That is not a word. And then we have ha, haukenum, which is a kind of duck. Twos, of course, is what you say, how you say tooth when you have lost a tooth. And then the word fool, completely incidental. Okay. Then put some instructions down here so we know what we're doing here. So we've already said, help dad find himself, unquote, and I'm sure our more <clears throat> keen-eyed uh, audience will know what that means. But you don't feel afraid to put hints in, because the activity placement, remember, when we set out, one of, our, one of our greatest objectives here was to make this a simple activity. This should be, this should be a calmly diverting activity with spikes, spikes of difficulty. So, hint, words like dad, pappy, and then you want it to have good coloring areas, old dude, or old duder, depending on what you call your own father, boomer, if he, if he, uh, if he happens to be he happens to go by Boomer or uh, Dr. Booms. Pops is what some people call their dad. You know, anything, anything that you want to put in there. Pops, and of course, you know, most, most folks' is affectionate term for their, for, for their fathers, which is little grandpa. Yeah, because that's what they are, really, aren't they? Aren't dads just little grandpas? It's true. And um, there we go. Okay. And folks, we got, oh, oh, okay. We got moments left, we got moments left. Let's see, see if we can, see if we can get this through on time. I hope we can, I hope we can. All right, give me just a moment here. All right, all right, oh no, oh no. Oh. All right, that's right. When the distance to done seems impossibly far, Focus on your next steps, my friends, and keep on moving. For it is the doing that gets it done. We have four minutes remaining before we must stop. So let's see how much ground we can cover in that time. Hey, kids, how do we grow when we're done and we show? We're We are proudly. That's right. You are better than you have ever been and you're still getting better. So do not apologize for being where you are. Do not let perfect be the enemy of good. No, my friends, do not. Everything you love was started from scratch, and your very favorite artist was once a beginner. We want to see what you made. So take a snap of that. Send a picture down to the number below. Oh, coconuts, there he is again, boy. The green room isn't stocked with milk bones, and so he's going to throw a big wing ding now. Coconuts, we hear you. We're taking care of it. Can you get, can you get on Coconuts' green room? Oh, boy, he is a taskmaster. He, he really is. Good dog, though. Good dog. Real good dog. We want to see what you made. Just take a snap of that or have some father figure of yours do it. Send it to the number down below. Maybe we can show it on TV if we got time. And folks, everyone is sending in there. Everyone's trying to get through on these final lines. Everyone's trying to send in art. You just be patient if you can't get through. We're going to get you through the second we can here. All right. Here we go. Oh, we're so close. We're so close to done. Let's see how, let's see how we're doing here. Let's see how we're doing here. Uh, let's see how we're doing here. Let's take a look at the art. Okay, let's go. Whoa, 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 there we go. Okay, all right. I got to get some color in here. It's not going to look like a finished product. Okay. Yum ba dum About two minutes left. Okay, what can we get done in two minutes? Whew! Boy, I'm sweating through this white suit. Why don't they make a white suit that is sweat resistant? They don't. They don't. And I won't wear a t-shirt because I, I like the suggestion of my pectoral muscles to be viewable through the blazer.
I think it's I think it's masculine. I like it. What do you think of that, darling? Good thinking, my love. Good thinking. Good thinking. Give the people what they want. All right. Got just a scant minute remaining here. All right. Let's see what we get to. Okay. Looking at this now, the thing that I I want, like, because I want folks to be able to color in the father of their choice. So. Your dad's probably not going to be a canary yellow. He may be another color. And so I'm going to let you do that. I'm going to spend my time here emphasizing the, the title areas here. So it's like, this is the activity. Look here. And again, we would do this different probably with uh, typography and callouts where this a design, uh, design final product here. But for the concept art, this is great. And I like, I like when the, the instructions are intermingled throughout. I think that that looks really nice. And I don't, I don't even mind, even though it's a bit of an impediment to readability, I don't even mind the instructions. I don't mind the instructions around the mustache. I think that's fun. Okay, so we got some good options here. I'm just going to call that out, but I don't think that's a practical thing on this layer. Not a good use for remaining seconds here. And stop. Woo! 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 <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. We hear ya. Woo! We got 50 seconds left, folks. I'm looking at this now, and there's a lot that I like about it. I like that we managed to get the father image as the central element, and the idea of drawing in your father's facial features is, to me, an irreverent good time. Because, you know, at some point you're going to draw your father in here, and then you're going to show it to your father, and you're going to have to watch his expression very carefully because he's going to want to encourage you, although it's possible that you have made a depiction of him which is not to his eye flattering, and that is his fault and not yours. So just go ahead and put him on the spot. You know, you ask a lot of questions. Hey, Papa, what do you think of this? What do you think? How do you, I, I love you so much, Papa. What do you think of the drawing I made of you? I love you. Does it look like you? You, you like those big warts on your nose, Dad? I tried to make them look like your warts. Woo! And Tom is up. That's right, folks. We make art best when we make art daily. That's why I'm asking you to make a pledge. I'm asking you to cross your heart for art. Do you believe you can join me in making art every single day? Now, I know that is an outlandish request for who could do anything every single day of their life. Well, that's a great question, and I hope that we can find out together. You know, it can be as little as five minutes a day, but every day that you mark your calendar, every day that you say, today I did art, today I did art, today I did art, forms a link in a beautiful chain. And the longer that chain gets, the more reluctant you are going to be to break it. And in doing so, you will create a habit that makes your art better and better and better, and in so doing, makes you your best self. Ain't that sound like something? Well, I hope you join me. In the meantime, friends, in the meantime, in the meantime, I think you know what time it is. Yeah, friends, back in the old days, we'd all leave this tent, go out back, we'd have a big pancake breakfast and some artistic fellowship. You'd line up at the griddle for some strong coffee, Fresh squeezed juice, but and soon again, friends, we will. But for now, well, sunny noon's our honeymoon. Belle, come on up here. Darling, you make lots of friends in the chat. You know, the chat was a little quiet today. I think everybody was busy making a restaurant-style activity play mat, and I do love when you're all making art. Oh, I do too. That's right. We hope that you join us next week when we're going to be making mysterious artifacts. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> Your favorite, mysterious artifacts. That's right. That's that feminine mystique. All right, friends, we're going to see you next Sunday. See you here at 11 a.m. Pacific. Happy Sunday. See you next Sunday.